Silicon Valley Future Forum. Thank you, John, for the introduction, and thank you, Daniel, for the invitation. It's a, a pleasure to be here, and uh, I was checking out some of the uh, companies uh, in the hall there, uh, very interesting. Uh, so today I'll talk about some of the efforts at Amazon and in, I'm part of the AWS uh, deep learning group. So we are enabling a whole range of uh, AI tools and services on the cloud uh, you know, at large scale. So I'll ta also dig a bit deeper into the challenges that come with distributed optimization and what forms of distributed deep learning can we enable on the MXNet package that we are developing. Uh, this is an open source package that uh, originally was a university effort and now it is Apache, it's in the Apache incubation and uh, there is active development that we are doing in our group. So when it comes to uh, the trinity that's fueling uh, artificial intelligence today, it's made up of three components. Uh, one is, of course, the core algorithms, you know, how, what kind of uh, algorithms would enable us to process large amounts of data, you know, account for variability across um, natural domains such as computer vision, language, and be able to produce meaningful results, right? But in addition to the algorithms, the two other components that are very crucial are data and computing because both of these were in fact absent in the 80s, like we just didn't have enough data or compute power way back in the 80s when there was a lot of excitement about AI, but it didn't take off uh, because of the lack of data and compute. And so I wanna emphasize that uh, in so many applications, if you wanna take it to the next level, thinking about how to get good quality annotations, uh, you know, uh, clean up the data and then uh, employ intelligent algorithms is an important component as well. And the third uh, part of the trinity is uh, computing. Uh, you know, so as we uh, increase our needs uh, for deep learning, as we come up with bigger and bigger models, there is an increasing need for compute power. And this is where AWS uh, plays a key role in uh, providing elastic compute infrastructure and uh, be able to you know, have models at large scale uh, done in a very efficient way. And I'll talk about how MXNet uh, can enable you to make use of uh, large amounts of compute power but with very high efficiency. So indeed, uh, deep learning has now touched almost all uh, different domains. Uh, it started with uh, understanding of ImageNet, right? The ImageNet competition was the famous one where deep learning showed a big improvement from the other techniques. Since then, it's uh, had a huge impact uh, in speech recognition, uh, understanding natural language, and now autonomy. And so we are looking at increasingly more challenging, more complex tasks with deep learning. And this, will, this trend will continue uh, in the coming years. So as I said, the primary task for deep learning where it all began uh, was understanding of images. So the canonical task there is to detect various objects in images and understand the scene. So Amazon has now the recognition service, so it's recognition with a K, uh, where, which is a managed service. So if you input an image, you will get now a range of different categories with different confidence levels, right? So the idea is in a fast uh, manner, you can quickly get uh, uh, the uh, different kinds of annotations uh, for an image along with the confidence levels. And indeed, in this example, you see that uh, there is high confidence for categories such as beach and lower confidence for you know, other tags, like for instance, hotel. I mean, possibly like most of the images that were trained on also had a hotel, but there isn't a hotel in this image. So depending on what set of images you've been trained on, you can get uh, these categories with various confidence levels, right? 
So there's also a lot of interest in specialized uh, computer vision, especially with facial analysis. I mean, indeed, face recognition and verification can have a range of applications, uh, you know, with surveillance, healthcare, a range of different uh, industries. And so recognition also has a specialized uh, facial analysis and uh, verification services. So here you can have tags such as uh, what's the emotion of a person, are there sunglasses, is there a mustache, and so on. So with computer vision now, you know, we are just ever expanding the range of tasks and these are getting increasingly more challenging in terms of what we are asking uh, deep learning to do. Right. To give you a brief uh, intuition of what these underlying networks are doing, Right, so these are based on convolutional neural networks. So the idea of what convolution does is to in kind of uh, really explore the full entirety of spatial information uh, in a translational invariant manner. So the intuition is there is a small sized filters that can now scan through the image and extract features. And now you're doing this in multiple layers, so you're getting increasingly more complex features as you, um, you know, kind of combine the lower level features into higher level ones. And, and that's what a multi-layer uh, convolutional network is accomplishing. And indeed, in the last layer, which is the output layer, you get uh, uh, these, uh, you know, it's a vector of probabilities. So meaning with what uh, confidence level or what, what probability do I expect a dog in this image? And you may get a number such as 85%, right? And there's a much lower probability, hopefully, of the wrong category, such as the cat. And so this is the uh, you know, deep uh, convolutional deep neural network that powers uh, almost all of uh, computer vision today. And as I mentioned before, the idea is as you go through multiple layers of the network, you get increasingly um, richer uh, feature extractions. Uh, to, this is from uh, a paper by Zeller et al. where you can see in the first layer there are simple, sorry, uh, there are simple features that uh, are just like lines and uh, simple shapes. But as you go through the higher layers, uh, you can now detect features that are increasingly more complex, such as, say, the face of a dog, or uh, you know, there is uh, a person in the other one. So the idea is uh, your detector becomes uh, increasingly better as you go through the multiple layers of the network. So having a deep network uh, uh, has shown to be quite crucial uh, to get uh, state-of-the-art performance in detecting these complex shapes. So other flavor of deep learning involves sequence models, right? So when it comes to processing natural language, now you have a sequence of words. And so for this, you need to maintain memory. So that's the notion of the state variable, which now you propagate uh, you know, forward in time, and in some models you could also propagate in both directions. And so that's the idea that in addition to input and output, you also have a state variable. And if you unroll uh, these networks, now you can have different kinds of interesting architectures. So in this uh, architecture that I've shown here, the intuition is uh, you're encoding your question here. So the question is asking, how are you? Right, so you're coming up uh, with an embedding of what the question is asking, and then you feed it to produce the answer, and that's the decoder side. And so as you can see, the memory is propagated as you go through your question sentence, and now the embedding from the question part, the encoder part, is now transferred over to the decoder part, and, and this way you can now generate uh, the answer to your uh, question. And uh, these networks are even more challenging uh, compared, uh, say, to the con convolutional neural networks because there are issues like now we have variable length. I mean, we can have short sentences, long pieces of text. How do we process all of them equally well? 
right? And natural language has so much variability, how do we overcome that? And so this is an active area of research on how to do this efficiently. And so now when it comes to Amazon, uh, you know, we are employing uh, deep learning and machine learning in just so many possible ways. I mean, of course, some of them are uh, uh, very, uh, you know, popular, but there are also others that are more under the hood. You know, for instance, uh, when it comes to fulfillment and logistics, uh, you can now think of deep learning and machine learning employed in all different uh, levels to improve supply chain, to improve the prediction of which items uh, will go out of stock, you know, how should I uh, stack the different items uh, in the warehouse. So there is a lot of interesting uh, research on how to do this efficiently. And the other aspect, of course, is search and discovery, right? So there is uh, the A9 office uh, uh, in Palo Alto that's looking at search and how do we search these huge uh, product catalogs? Uh, how do we do uh, visual search? How do we do search over different attributes? Uh, and so again, uh, machine learning is very crucial to uh, do this at scale. And indeed, we are always uh, innovating on new products at Amazon, and I'll show you some examples. Indeed, as the previous speaker mentioned, uh, Alexa is a very popular uh, product at Amazon, and uh, we are increasingly adding new skills for Alexa. So there is the speech recognition module, there is the knowledge module in terms of uh, you know, understanding what skills are being asked of Alexa and how to then execute that. Uh, so this is a very rich and complex um, scenario of um, uh, you know, being able to understand what a human wants. Another uh, popular area has been uh, the use of computer vision for shopping, right? So Amazon Go wants to automate shopping, uh, you know, so there is the uh, beta version of this in uh, Seattle, and uh, it's a weird feeling. You feel like a shoplifter at times. You're just walking there, picking up what you like, and just walking out. And uh, so in future, we you know, want this to be seamless. Uh, we want computer vision and with uh, sophisticated tracking algorithms be able to automatically understand uh, what items are being purchased out of this store. And uh, as I said, I'm part of Amazon AI with the AWS division, and we are uh, launching a range of products uh, aimed at enabling large-scale machine learning on the cloud. So as I said before, the Apache MXNet is the deep learning engine, and uh, we are providing uh, more functionalities and uh, enabling efficient uh, computation at scale. And we've also launched a range of managed services. Uh, Polly, as you will see, is a text-to-speech real-time service. Recognition I introduced before is a real-time uh, image analysis service. And Lex is a chatbot interface that lets you get, uh, uh, you know, use the power of Alexa within your applications. So let me give a little more overview on each of these uh, different ones. So, you know, as I've told before, uh, when it comes to deploying these very large networks, this is becoming increasingly more challenging, right? So you cannot expect uh, to, for instance, code this complex network from scratch. You need, uh, you know, it's simplifying network definitions. You, you know, a new uh, programmer should be able to quickly deploy the more complex network architectures through simplifying definitions. And uh, so MXNet uh, has a flexible programming API. It has a lot of built-in functionalities for a range of state-of-the-art models. And it also has um, a, a, a flexible mixed programming interface that allows you to mix uh, declarative and imperative style of programming uh, to trade off simplicity with uh, optimality. 
and portability is another important one. So you like to be able to run your deep learning models across a range of different uh, platforms and MXNet supports amalgamation, so that lets you compile everything into a single source file and run it across a range of platforms. And uh, there is also active development being done uh, for deep learning on the edge. Uh, AWS now has AWS Greengrass, and we are adding a lot of deep learning functionalities on small devices with memory and energy constraints. And the third one, as I said, uh, the important one is efficiency. As you keep increasing your uh, uh, number of machines or number of GPUs, you expect uh, for your throughput to also correspondingly increase. And so the question is how much of overhead is a package uh, you know, uh, having in, uh, in the setting and how can we avoid that? So, I mean, as I said, uh, MXNet has uh, a high level of efficiency. In fact, um, you know, the numbers I'm showing here are on 16 GPUs. So on AWS, you can uh, invoke a P216X large instance. So that is uh, 16 GPU instance. And on this, we see uh, that as you're doubling your number of GPUs, the throughput, uh, the ideal one should double and we are very close to that on some of the state-of-the-art networks, such as the Inception V3 or the ResNet uh, networks. And we can also scale even further. You know, instead of uh, just being on a single machine, now we can invoke multiple such nodes. And now, uh, you, in this example here, we have 256 GPUs. And you can see that you are still carrying on uh, the scaling pretty well. Uh, you lose, you indeed lose a little bit because there is the network involved. You know, these are multiple nodes that are put in together, but still you can uh, have a very high level of efficiency. And this is going to be crucial as we are building bigger models. We are, uh, you know, processing even larger amounts of data, and that's where MXNet has a big win. And so with respect to the other services, as I said, Lex uh, is a flexible uh, chatbot interface uh, service. So meaning developers can nicely specify you know, how the chatbot should interact uh, with a customer as well as uh, involve, invoke the power of Alexa within their chatbots, right? So I mean, Lex is really the middle part of Alexa, if that's the inspiration behind its name. And indeed, it also has connectors with other messengers and other enterprise connectors. So this can be very useful in enterprise applications. So just to give you an example here, I mean, if uh, you want your chatbot to interact with the customer and be able to do flight bookings, how do you, uh, you know, design such a framework? And here, uh, you can invoke the uh, speech recognition module and understand you know, what this is about. And uh, then the uh, knowledge graph of Alexa can come in and understand that uh, you know, the flight is about, it's about flight booking and uh, next Friday means you know, it's this particular date. And you can you fill in all the entries in your uh, table and the ones that are missing, you ask the human and interactively and, you know, get all the information that's needed to do the flight booking. And so Lex makes it very easy to specify these kind of tasks for chatbots and quickly build them. Uh, as I said, the other service uh, is Polly. So the idea is to uh, be able to have lifelike uh, speech uh, in real time, right? So, we, and there's also a whole range of different languages and voices. Community engagement programs, there's AWS credits for research, education, nonprofits, startups, uh, and we, of course, are actively hiring on a number of positions. So if you're interested, uh, uh, drop in a line. Thank you. Silicon Valley Future Forum.